Hello guys, Moritz here, and in this video we are going to hook up the fan so we can cool down the Raspberry Pi as well as the Pi drive. And for that we are going to use the 2N2222 PNP transistor because it can handle up to 600 milliamps and this fan only takes about 50 milliamps plus minus 10%, so that should be fine. We will also use this cable and hook it up to our DC-DC converter since we have those two spare connections here and that way we can easily disconnect the fan if we ever need to and then we will also splice in the transistor right into this cable here so it's a lot easier because we also don't need this little connector right here so we can get rid of that and after that we will write a little bit of code so we can read the temperatures of the Raspberry Pi and the Pi drive and control this fan accordingly. So we will get back to the bench and splice in the transistor and also we will need a one kilo ohm resistor to protect our GPIO pin of the Raspberry Pi and then we can choose any of the pins available on the Pi. We will also put in an easy connector so we can easily hook it up. Back at the workbench I've got all the parts we will need. That is the 2N2222 PNP transistor, the one kilo ohm resistor and I've also thrown in a free running dial to protect the transistor from the current that is generated when the motor is turned off but still spins. I've also made a little circuit diagram so you can understand the circuit a little bit better. We've got our GPIO pin from the Raspberry Pi down here that goes through a one kilo ohm resistor to protect the pin and the PNP transistor. We've got our emitter connected to ground. The base is obviously connected to the GPIO pin so we can drive it and the collector is connected to the motor. In this case our 12 volts PC fan. The other lead of the motor goes to 12 volts and here is the free running diode which protects against reverse current. So when we turn off the transistor the motor will still keep spinning and generate a current in the other direction which will then go back through the diode and not through the transistor. With that said we we can now move on building the circuit. For that we will cut off one of the connectors like that. That's long enough. We will also cut off the cable from the fan or not all of them but at least we will cut off this connector and for that the and we will cut off these two wires. Let's get them as short as possible. I will leave the yellow cable on in case we need it afterwards, but I don't think so. Oh, what I also forgot to mention is that there are two versions of the transistor, the 2N2222 and the P2N2222. On both part numbers there's a 2 missing. And the difference in both is that the pinout is different, the collector and emitter are switched around. I've got the 2N2222, so if we get our part, here's the transistor. So if you log down from the top, the center pin is the base, the left pin is the emitter and the right pin is the collector in my case. So keep that in mind or else you will destroy your part maybe. Maybe not, but who knows what happens. So if we follow the circuit, we will splice in the transistor into the negative wire. So we will cut it somewhere along. As you can see, I've stripped back the wires and also twisted them and I think we will also need to cut the red wire because we will need to put in the free running diode. Let's do it at the same spot to make it easier and now I will strip back the wires again and twist the leads. Those are those done and now we will get the components out of the way just as before. We will pre-tin all the wires. Now we will first put in the transistor or before we do that we will take the resistor and solder it onto the transistor with a little bit of heat shrink. The legs are very long so we will shorten those. Get the transistor and we will get some shrink tube as well and cut it to size. So this long piece should be enough and let's solder this together. Now we will get our shrink tube and slide it over. Mm -hmm. 
and that's the resistor connected to the transistor. Now if you remember the left pin from this angle is the emitter and the right one the collector and the emitter goes to ground and the collector to the fan. For that we will also shorten these leads a little bit just like that and the other one as well and we will bend them over to each side just like that that it looks like a cross or a T and now the emitters on the left side and the collector on the right side and the right one goes to the motor which is this lead so let's solder that together and also don't forget to put over the shrink tube beforehand Order that on. Now we remember that we also need our diode connected, which I've got here. The side without the mark on it needs to go to this pin here. So let's try not dropping it and then we will solder that on as well. Like that. Then we will get the positive connection, put some shrink tube over that. So this positive connection coming from the fan and with the help of our helping hands connect that to there but we also want to connect the connector back to this so this part is getting a little bit tricky because we need to solder three connections at once let's see if we can get that in there as well mm, that's a lot harder than I thought Maybe we can get it that way. Oh, I forgot one thing. We will also need to put on some shrink tube over the other lead. Here I've got another piece of shrink tube, which will go over this side to the connector. First, I will try soldering together the red wires. And now I will try to get on the diode. Yeah, looks good to me. So here we have our diode and transistor connected and we will already put on the shrink tube that we put on beforehand on the wires and shrink those down. And get the other one that we put on the red wire of the connector and get it as close as possible. Now the only thing left to do is solder on the negative connection of the connector. But before we do that, once again, we will put over some heat shrink. I've cut off a piece, put on the shrink tube. Then we will slide back our heat shrink and shrink that down. And that's that part done. Now the only thing left is the wire coming off of the resistor and we are going to shorten that quite a bit. Here I've got this jumper cable with two female ends. Now we could just stick that on here and call it a day, but I'm actually going to solder that on so it doesn't come apart later on. I will snip this end off so we got enough cable for connecting it later on. I will strip the end and twist the wire. Then you know the normal routine. I will pre-tin it, get some more heat shrink, slide it over here, align the cable to the resistor and solder them together, just like that. Then slide the heat shrink back over and shrink it. And that's our fan done. Just got this wire dangling down, but we can fix that by taping it to the rest. And now we have a fan with our Molex connector and a wire to control the transistor, which then in turn controls the fan. Now we still need to connect the female Molex to our buck converter. And let's do that now. So the input side was the left one. And now I will strip the ends and we're going to take this Molex and connect the yellow wire and ground which are normally 12 volts to the input side of the converter and the red and black wire to the output side and so we have a full molex connector and later on we can connect other peripherals that are connected by molex but i don't think that we'll ever use it but let's just do it so i will strip back the wires and 
twist them, pre-tin them and then solder them on. I've stripped them back and twisted them and I also decided to not pre-tin them because it's much easier to get the cables through these small holes without any solder on them, just like that. But actually we want the yellow one on the input side as well as the ground directly next to that. and we will solder them on and make sure these get hot enough so that the solder can wick in to the wires and make a good connection. And the other one, heat it up with a little bit of solder and then give it some more. So now we've got our 12 volts coming from here, our 5 volts going to our ATX Raspi and we've got the Molex with 12 and 5 volts coming from there that we can plug in to our fan just like that or if we ever need something else powered which could use 5 or 12 volts we can always put a Y cable in here or a splitter cable and connect everything else. So this part is done and the only thing left now is to put it on the Raspberry Pi and then write a little program to control this fan. Here we are back at the table and I've moved over our fan and I will set that aside uh, somewhere. Let's move this stuff around and I will set it down here. I will then connect our back converter back to the ATX Raspi and also I will get the lead going going to the transistor and connect that to pin 37 on the Raspberry Pi which is the one over here. It's not the last one because that's a ground pin and that is GPIO 26 and we are going to use that one to control the fan. The next thing we will do is get our power cable and here's the 12 volt cable. Plug it in into our plug converter. Let's turn on the meter to check if the voltage is right and turn everything on. And I think we messed up the potentiometer, so we will turn that down a little bit. Now we will try turning the fan off and on by simply writing the GPIO pin high or low back at the screen again. And you might notice that it's looking a little bit different now because I had a problem with the server version because I couldn't update the software on there. That's also a thing that I missed before to update the software with apt-get and now I installed a Raspbian version. I think it's Wheezy and also a version without a graphical user interface. So I will just log in and here we are. I also changed the username from Pi to Moritz. What I've also done was to install the ATX Raspi shutdown check script again so that's also working now and I have downloaded one of my update scripts and updated the system and the script is this one here update.sh but I will also put down a link in the comments where you can get this script and what this simply does is update the system upgrade it and cleans up everything and if you throw in the parameter reboot it will automatically reboot the system when it's finished and now let's move on to controlling the fan so for that I will change to the root user and to control the GPIO pins we will simply export the pin we want to use and for that we will echo number 26 and write that into the file this class GPIO export. Now the pin should be available. Uh, the next thing to do is set it to an output. For that we will echo out and write that into the file sys class GPIO 26 and direction. Now to turn the fan on we will write a 1 into GPIO 26 value and as you can see the fan turns on. To turn it back off just write a 0 and the fan turns off. When we are done with the pin we just unexport it so it's not longer available and yeah we will exit and now I will write a little program that you can execute that controls the fan and for that we will read the CPU temperature as well as the hard drive temperature. Now the CPU temperature we can get by reading the file sys class thermal thermozone 0 temp. 
and that should give us a value in milli degrees I think yeah 48,312 should represent 48.312 degrees and that's the temperature of our CPU now for reading the temperature of the hard drive we will need to install smart mon tools let's do that And now we can read the temperature with the command sudo smart control minus d sat minus minus all and give the drive which is under devices SDA. Since we are printing or getting the whole smart status let's pipe that into less. And there we have the data of our drive. Now when we scroll down with the arrow keys we can see temperature in celsius right here in this line and it's currently at 31 degrees now we could also use grab and type in temperature and that should just get us the one line let's clear the screen so you can see better and there's the one line to get only the number in degrees let's change this to celsius and pipe that into awk and then we will tell it to only print the parameter number 10 and yeah, and that only gives us the value. So we can use that to get the temperature. And now I will just write the program and then I will be right back and we can go over it. I finished the code controlling the fan and now let's go over it. It's a simple shell script. And first I have four constants defined up here. Constant fan is the GPIO pin of the fan. In my case, this is 26. Constant min temperature is the temperature when the fan fan should turn on. For demonstration purposes this is currently set to 45 degrees. Then the other constant C temperature offset is the number when the fan should turn off subtracted from min temperature so the fan doesn't constantly turn on and off and on and off again. So if you set this temperature to 45 degrees the fan will turn on at 45 degrees of either the hard drive or CPU. I mean you could improve the program by also setting a temperature for the hard drive separately but the fan in this case would turn off when the temperature goes down below 43 degrees so 45 minus 2 which is 43 and the last bit is the constant hard drive where you can define your hard drive in this case this is device SDA so you put in SDA the next thing that gets calculated is the temperature when the fan should turn off which is as I said constant min temperature minus constant temperature offset then we've got a variable fan state which is set to zero so the fan is initially turned off then the next thing we do is export the GPIO pin so the fan pin can be controlled then we will set the fan pin as an output next we got a while loop which is running forever where first the CPU temperature gets read from the file I showed you before sys class thermal thermal zone zero temp then we divide that by 1000 so we get the temperature in degrees C and not milli degrees next up we read the hard drive temperature with the command we checked out before sudo smart control minus d sat minus minus all slash device and the constant hard drive we defined in the beginning of this script then pipe that into grab and pipe that into awk to get the temperature the next thing is we check if the fan is turned on or not and if it's turned off and either the cpu temperature or the hard drive temperature is greater than our minimal temperature to turn on then it will go into the statement and set the fan state to 1 and also set the GPIO pin to 1 so the fan turns on. If this first condition was not met then it will check if the fan state is indeed turned on and if the temperature of the CPU and if the temperature of the hard drive is less than the temperature offset which is again the minimal temperature minus the offset of 2 in this case. And if that 
condition is met, the fan state gets set to zero and the value of the pin or GPIO pin gets set to zero so the fan turns off. After that we sleep for five seconds and redo the whole thing again. So let's run this script and as you can hear the fan turned on and after a few seconds it should turn off and it turned off. So let's stop that program. So if you want this shell script to start every time the operating system boots we will copy the file into etc under the same name and of course we need sudo writes to do that. Now if we check the file should be somewhere. Yep, it's down here. Also, before we can do that, you should use change mode 775 fan control so it is executable. And now we will edit the file etcrc.local and there you can see there's already the script from shutdown check and we will add our file pan control.sh and also don't forget the end at the end of the line so this gets executed in the background and this whole script can run when the operating system starts so now let's try this and reboot and the fan turned on so that works greatly and that's it for this video if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Also, consider subscribing. In the next video, we are going to do some software stuff, including setting up a remote SSH connection, so stay tuned for that. Bye!